Well, good morning and welcome to James with Jesus on this Wednesday, December 7th, um, a date which will live in infamy, the 81st anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. But the scripture reading, the gospel reading that's appointed for today is from Matthew's gospel, the 13th chapter, sorry, the 12th chapter. And Jesus says, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person brings good things out of a good treasure, and the evil person brings evil things out of an evil treasure. I tell you, on the day of judgment, you will have to give an account for every careless word you utter. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Whoops. That wasn't a sign. <laughs> um, a couple things that struck me on this. One is um, the fact that I knew that Jesus had took upon himself in Matthew's gospel the exact verbiage that John the, John the Baptist had been using. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And Jesus used that terminology um, early in his public ministry. What I had not realized was that um, was that John the ba or that Jesus also took on the phrase "you brood of vipers" and you use that and he used that later, which is an interesting dynamic in a conversation about uh, about words and about being uh, accountable for any. Let's see what was the exact word. Account for any careless word. So here's using a phrase which in our modern English idiom might be closer to you sons of you know, sons of guns, but not necessarily that, um, but linked to this, how we are to use our language. So, I don't know, food for, for thought there, that maybe niceness is not the definition of that as much as accuracy and truthfulness. Um, but I would also say that for a community of faith, that uh, the essence of understanding the power of our words, uh, how incredibly powerful they can be in encouraging people, the number of people that reflect back on in life saying, well, my Sunday school teacher noticed this, or my coach said that, um, that these are words that can really motivate and stay with people and perhaps plant dreams or foster dreams in their development that people who uttered those words don't fully realize and appreciate what a positive, tremendous impact they've had on others. And obviously the converse is true, that if um, sometimes hurtful words can really stay with people as well. So again, to be part of that dynamic of encouragement, of development, uh, I, I've said this before, but one of the things I love about the unique nature of the ministry here at University Lutheran is engaging with young adults in their collegiate years and how the the breadth and depth of wisdom for folks that are decades and decades further down the road can be empathetic, can recognize that it is a new day, it's a new time, it's a new economy, it's new pressures, it's new everything, so we've not lived the lives that 18 to 22 year olds are living currently. Um, but there are some other universal dynamics that setbacks can be used to maybe open up other avenues that might not have been noticed before. And to this day, and I'm significantly older than the college students, hearing God's no is more painful than hearing God's yes, and yet both are vital for discernment and direction. And so it's hard to say, oh, thank God for that. No, this further clarifies where I'm to go. <laughs> it's not the same expression of, oh, thank God for that. Yes, this is exciting. But yet both truly are a means of discernment, a means of better understanding. So um, just recognizing the power of words that we have and also um, it's, it's interesting because I'd prefer to be a listener than a talker, but I've been called into a profession that requires me to communicate a lot more than I 
when I was in commercial real estate, it was really a function of listening as deeply and clearly as possible and sometimes not even uttering any words to allow people to reach a, uh, a fair decision other than just maybe a few keywords to guide conversations. But no, enough words for this morning. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for this new day. Thank you for the gift of scripture and the gift of community in which to study and learn and discuss and debate and discern. And most importantly, that that scripture continues to form our way of living, that we may live out in love and service to one another and to our neighbors, and even learn how to grow in love and prayer for our enemies. So help us continue on this path this day through the power of your Holy Spirit. And we ask and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, do have a blessed day today, and I'll be with you again tomorrow morning. God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.